And it came to pass in the first century common era that Jesus invited his followers, disciples, and apostles to the northern slope of the Sea of Galilee on Mount Eremos, later to be called Mount of Beatitudes, near the town of Tabaha, for what would be his most widely known sermon of all times. It contained what would be the basic tenets of the religion of Christianity. It is called the Sermon on the Mount. It was Jesus saying how to live dedicated to God. Here it is in its entirety as written by the Apostle Matthew, a former tax collector, in Matthew chapters 5, 6, and 7, as Jesus was telling all future Christians how to lead a better life. It was divided into approximately 20 topics. The Sermon on the Mount now begins. Blessed those, blessed are those poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. And blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they, the prophets, which were before you. Ye are the salt of the earth. But if the salt had lost his savor, wherein shall it be salted? It is there thenceforth good for nothing, but to be cast out and to be trodden under the foot of men. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and give it light unto all that are in the house. Light, let your light so shine before men so that they can see your good works and glorify your Father. Glorify your Father, which are in heaven. Think not that I have come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, Till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law, till all is fulfilled. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments, and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be exalted in the kingdom of heaven. For I say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. Ye have heard that it is said by them of old time, thou shalt not kill, and whoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment but I say unto you that 
Whoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And whoever shall say to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council. But whoever shall say, thou fool, thou shall be in danger of hellfire. Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar, and there remembrance that thy brother hath unto against thee, leave there thy gift before the altar, and go thy way. Be reconciled to thy brother, and then come and offer the gift. Agree with thine adversary quickly, whilst thou art in way with him. Last, at any time the adversary deliver thee to the judge, and the judge delivered to the officer, and thou be cast into prison. Verily, I say unto you, thou shalt by no means come out thence, till thou hast paid the uttermost farthing. <sighs> Ye have heard, it was said by them of old time, thou shalt not commit adultery. I said unto her, Neither do I. Go, sin no more. But I say unto you, that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her, hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. And if thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members shall perish, and not that thy whole body shall be cast. Into and if it. thy right hand should offend thee, cut it off and cast it from thee. That one of thy members shall perish, and not that thy whole body be cast into hell. Ye, you have been taught that a man who divorces his wife must write out papers for her. But I tell you not to divorce your wife unless she has committed some terrible sexual sin. If you divorce her, you will cause her to be unfaithful. Just as if any man who marries her is guilty of taking another man's wife. Again, you have heard that it is said that those who have lived long ago don't make a false solemn pledge, but you should follow through with what you have pledged to the Lord. But I say unto you that you must not pledge at all. You must not pledge by heaven because it is God's throne. You must not pledge by the earth because it is God's footstool. You must not pledge by Jerusalem because it, it's the city of the great king. And you must not pledge by your head because you can't turn one hair, white or black. Let your yes mean yes. Let your no mean no. Anything more than this comes from the evil one. You have heard that it is said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you that you must not oppose those who want to hurt you. If people slap you against your right cheek, you offer them the left. These things are rotten. I need a refund. No, th these are good. We have no refunds, sir. No refunds. I can you offer you to buy some more vegetables, dates. If I can't get a refund, I need an apology. Apology? There's nothing wrong with those. They're good. They're old and rotten and stale. No, no, no. 
Oh, what are you doing? You can you can slap me on my cheek, but you can slap me on the other cheek too. But I'm not taking back that half-eaten figs. No way. You can forget it. There's no refunds. No apologies. To them as well. When they wish to haul you to the court and take your shirt, you offer them your coat too. When they force you to go one mile, go with them too. Give to those who ask and don't refuse those who wish to borrow and hate your enemy. But I say unto you, love your enemies. Love your enemies and pray for those who harm you. You have heard that it is said you must love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who harm you. So that is acting so that you will be acting as children of the Father who is in heaven. He, he makes the sun rise and on both the evil and the good and sands rain down on both the righteous and unrighteous. If you love only those who love you, what reward do you have? Don't even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet only your brothers and sisters, what more are you doing? Don't even the Gentiles do the same? And be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which in heaven is perfect? Take heed that ye do not. Do not your arms before men to be seen of them. Otherwise ye have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. Therefore, when thou dost doest thine alms, do not sound a trumpet before thee, as do the hypocrites in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have the glory of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But when thou dost alms, let do not thy left hand know what thy right hand doeth, that thine alms may be in secret, and thy Father, which seeth in secret himself, shall reward, reward thee openly. And when, when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to, play, to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou shut the door, pray, pray to thy Father which is in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. But when ye pray, use not vain repetition as the heathens do. For they think that they shall be heard with their much speaking. Ah, be not ye themselves like unto them. For your Father knoweth what things ye have need of before you ask him. After this manner, therefore, pray ye, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread 
and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if ye forgiveth not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. More ever, when ye fast, be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces that they may appear unto men to fast. Verily I say to you, they have their reward, but thou, when thou fastest, avoid thine head and wash, wash thy face, that thou appear not unto men fast, but unto thy Father which is in secret, and thy Father which is seeth in secret, shall reward thee openly. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where Thieves do not break through and steal. And where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Do you know what that means? A person's life is a reflection of his heart. Where is our treasure? Where is our heart? Where is our focus? Are your eyes focused on the seen or the unseen? Who or what are you serving? Transform your heart to focus on faith, to serve God and repent of your old ways. Invest in God's gifts because they are eternal. The light of the body is the eyes. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. But if thine eye be evil, then thy whole body shall be full of darkness. And if therefore the light that shall, that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate one and love the other, or also he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God in the man. Therefore I say unto you, take no thorough for your life. Take no through for your life. What ye shall eat, what ye shall drink, <sighs> More, nor yet for your body, what ye shall put on, is not the life more the meat than meat, and the body, the raiment. Behold, the fowls of the air. For they sow not, neither do they reap, nor father into the barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. And ye not that much better than they. Which of you, by taking through, can add one cubit onto his stature? And why take ye thought for, for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toll not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you 
that even Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of those. Wherefore, if God so clotheth the, the grass in the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or where withal shall we be clothed? <laughs> For all of these things the Gentiles do seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow. For the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil therefore. Judge not, lest ye be judged. For with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And what measure ye mate, it shall be measured to you again. And why beholdest the mote in thy brother's eye, but perceivest not the beam that is in thine own eye? Either how canst thou say to my brother, Brother, let me pull out the mote that is in thy eye, when thou thyself beholdest not the beam that is in thine own eye? Thou hypocrite, cast out first the beam in thine own eye, and then shall you, thou see clearly to pull out the mote in thy brother's eye. I have some beautiful songs for you, some verses I want you to hear. And this is the first great commandment, and the second unto... Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, or cast ye pearls before swine, lest they trample their feet upon them, and turn and rend ye. See, he's telling you not to waste your time giving pearls of wisdom to swine. Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. And knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For every one act that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. Of what man is there of you, whom if his son ask bread, will he give him a stone? Or he ask a fish, will he give him a serpent? If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father, which in heaven, give good things to them that ask him? Therefore all things, whatsoever ye that men should do to you, do ye even so to them. For this is the law and the prophets. Enter ye in at a straight gate, for wide is that gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in the reed, because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth into life, and few there be that find. Beware of false prophets which come in in sheep's clothing, 
But inwardly, inwardly they are ravening, ravening wolves. <laughs> Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistle? Even so, every good tree bring forth good fruit. But a corrupt tree bring forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every, time, every tree that bringeth forth not good fruit is honed down and cast into the fire. <laughs> Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works? And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye the work iniquity. Therefore, whoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken thee unto a wise man, which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house. And it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And every one that heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand. And when the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house, it fell. And great was the fall of it. And it came to pass, when I had ended these sayings, the people were astonished at my doctrine. For I taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. And when I came down from the mountain, great multitudes followed. On the top of the hill, now known as the Mount of Beatitudes, stands a Roman Catholic church on the north shore of the Sea of Galilee called the Church of the Beatitudes. It was built between 1937 and 1938 by architect Antonio Barluzzi. The church commemorates the approximate location where Jesus gave his major address at the beginning of his ministry. The church has an inscription in stone that affirms that every person has worth as a unique creation made in the image of God. It's the word of our loving God. It's his word that speaks to all of us. It's the word of our loving God. 
that by parables he reaches us. It's the word of our one true God. Through his word our ears are open to above. It's the word of our one true God that says our neighbor we should love. It's the word of our caring God, by parables he teaches us. If we listen, we will understand and spread his message through the land. It's the word of our caring God, by parables he teaches us. His truths are for our use today, as His words will never pass away, as His words will never pass away.